Timberwolves, Wild, and Lynx. We've had three weeks of spring training games so far. Today, Minnesota is hosting the Tampa Bay Rays at Hammond Stadium in the Lee Health Sports Complex. Hi, everyone. I'm Marty Gellner. Thanks for joining us for our Twins spring training coverage here on Valley Sports North. The regular season opens in a week and a half. On March 28th, the Twins will be in Kansas City for a three-game series against the Royals. A lot of anticipation, a lot of optimism for the 2024 season. But until then, it's the fine-tuning in Fort Myers. Minnesota hosting Tampa Bay. Chris Atterbury and Dan Gladden on the call. Spring training baseball from Florida. Next. Well, welcome back to Minnesota Twins Baseball here at the L Sports Complex. Twins of the Tampa Bay Rays doing battle here this afternoon. Andy Diaz will lead off. He'll be at first base for the Rays. Ahmad Rosario bats second place, second base. In left field batting third will be Randy Rosarena. Curtis Mead will be at third base batting fourth. In right field batting fifth, it'll be Richie Palacios. Alex Jackson will catch and he'll bat sixth. Francisco Mejia will DH bat seventh. At shortstop, batting eighth. Well, Selby's Vasavi will be at shortstop. And then Jake Mangum will be in center field. He's going to bat ninth. Pitching for the race here this afternoon. Right in Ryan Pepio. Tampa Bay Rays. Great food look action so far. 7 11. And two ties here so far. Here's the starting lineup for your Minnesota Twins. It'll be Edward Julian leading off. He'll be at second base. Carlos Correa bat second place short. Byron Buxton in center field. Going to bat third. Royce Lewis will be at third base. He's going to bat fourth. Batting fifth. And in right field would be Max Kepler. Carlos Santana bat sixth place first base. Catching to be Ryan Jeffers. DH today it's going to be Manny Margot. Willie Castro gets a start in left field. On the mound, Pablo Lopez. Reed Basner will be the home plate umpire. Marvin Hudson at first base. Brian Honora and Eric Bacchus will be the umpire at third base. Of course, two starting pitch. Brought to you by Park Chrysler Jeep in Burnsville. Stop in, shop their new showroom, or see them at parkcheap.com. Get you started. It's Chris Atterbury. All right, Pablo Lopez already getting you started. His first pitch to Yandy Diaz, the muscular first baseman, fell straight back and off and running. And Fort Myers, pleased to welcome in our television audience on Valley Sports North today. Great fruit lead. Lopez delivers. That one's coming right back for Josh. Catch, catch it, catch it. What a good crowd expected today. Folks still filing in. We've had lovely weather here in the Grapefruit League for the duration of spring training. O2 is upstairs bending Diaz back and it's one ball, two strikes. Pablo Lopez. Opening day starter for the Twins. It's his fourth outing here in the Grapefruit League. 0-2 over nine innings of work. And Diaz unloads on this ball to the left. And that ball's going to kick it out of here. Lead off home run, Yandy Diaz. And he touches up Pablo Lopez. It's the third long ball given up by Lopez this spring. And it's a one nothing lead for the Tampa Bay Rays. That didn't take long. Second home run of the spring for Yandy Diaz. He's got those bright, luminescent green toed spikes touching home plate after a deep home run to left center field. Ahmed Rosario will be the batter. Kind of strange to see him in a raised powder blue uniform after seeing so much of Rosario with the Cleveland Guardians. First pitch just wide. Fastball at 93, one ball, no strikes. Let's go, Ahmed, right here. Let's go, Ahmed. Lopez works off the first base side of the rubber. Twins in the home whites today. Pablo Plateward, and that's a breaking ball. Rosario tried to hold up on him, did. Two balls and no strikes. Danny, we've seen Pablo throughout the course of the spring, and his pitches have been crisp. He has given up the home runs, but... He is using his pitches very differently here in the Grapefruit League than he'll do 
in the regular season. 2-0, right down the sheet for a strike, 2-1. and one. Well, I, I think that there's always that, you know, the, the process to what you're working on, what you want to try to accomplish in today's outing. One thing that I noticed, though, with not just Pablo Lopez, but a lot of the pitchers, there's a pattern here, no balls and two strikes. 2-1, foul straight back, and that's just below Kyle Hammer to our right. We're getting peppered in the early game, 2-2. Two and two. And, and I'm not sure, I have to dig a little deeper to find out if that is by design to go ahead and you don't get quickly 0-2 and then finish him off. Lopez has a stated goal of throwing any pitch to either handed batter in any count. There's a pitch eye three and two. Trying to stay out of falling into pattern so that you know, hitters can kind of sit on one pitch or expect a certain pitch in a certain situation. One nothing raise just underway. The full count pitch fouled straight back again by Rosario. He has a couple of home runs this spring in his own right. Well, what happened to this guy over there in Cleveland? I thought that he was dialed in to be the future shortstop for a long, long time over there. Came over in the Tatis deal. Well, not the Tatis deal. The Lindor. Miss. Lindor. Deal. That's a strikeout of Rosario. Came over with a couple of other players in the Francisco Lindor deal and, and played a great shortstop there for one year. Remember he had a couple of five hit games against the Twins down the stretch. He was a tough out for Minnesota. But the offense fizzled. And now he finds himself signing a one-year deal here with Tampa Bay. Mandy Arena will be the batter. Fan favorite in Tampa St. Pete. Swings right through the first pitch and counts as 0-1. Now the Rays have had an interesting Grapefruit League schedule. They went to the Dominican Republic and played a couple of games against the Red Sox. And talking to all members of that traveling party, they all just lauded the experiences. But Rosarena fouls away down the right field line, 0 2. Twins had a game in the Dominican Republic a couple of years ago, but it was just one game fly in, play, come back. This time it included a, a built in off day, tour the academies, meet some people, and just a tremendous experience for both clubs. 0 2 is inside with a changeup. One ball, two strikes. Lead-off home run for Yandy Diaz. Just underway, top of the first. Lopez kicks and fires. And the breaking ball is low and outside. It's 2-2. Two and two. So he jumped ahead 0-2, then threw him a changeup and a curveball. Pablo pitching here. A couple of other Twins pitchers were scheduled to throw on the other side of the complex today, including Anthony DiSclefani. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on a hit well left field. Again, Castro looking up, and again, it's a souvenir. That one will glance off a glove of a fan and end up in the net, suspended below the scoreboard as a Rosarena will complete the circuit. It's the second home run of the opening frame for the Tampa Bay Rays, and they lead Lopez and the Twins 2 0. A Rosarena is now 4 for 24 this spring, only four hits. He has a double and two home runs. A couple of loud home runs to left center, and here's Curtis Mead. Curtis Mead, young Australian, ranked as the second best prospect in the Tampa Bay system. And yet he will not be part of the spring breakout game later this afternoon. He's playing in this game instead, as he still has a chance to make the club. Strike called, it's 0-1. I want to say both those home runs off the fastball there, and both of them just kind of tailor-made. Lopez offers and misses low and outside. It's one ball, one strike. Now, Meade here is a 23-year-old Australian. He had a taste of the bigs last year in 24 games. I feel like he could play some second base for them this season, a right-handed batter. And the 1-1 one -one swung on and missed. It's 1-2. A lot of swing and miss in his game. That's... Loophole they're trying to close up. But that spring breakout game will follow this game. Twins prospects, Rays prospects. And it will feature on Valley Sports North. We'll have the telecast for you. No radio for that one. The one two. Breaking ball fought off foul on the right field line. Junior Camarino is the top prospect for the Rays. He was recently sent out and as such will play in the breakout game and not too happy about it frankly he thinks he's a big league player he's only 20 years old 
A one two to me. Swung on and the old fister towards first base. Santana foul territory makes the catch. Just shy of the raise dug out in the camera line. Now pops spinning away from Santana, but he chased it down with that big pink glove. And you know, we've seen him on the other side a lot, Danny, but the twin staff has been very impressed seeing his day-to-day -day work defensively in particular. Well, no question. He's turned himself into a fine defensive player over there at first base. Cool glove consideration. And, you know, he's always been a player that's taken a lot of pride in his play over there. Richie Palacios bats left-handed and swings right through a pitch. It's 0-1. You know, that's one thing about, you know, yeah, he, probably known for his offense, but it's nice to be able to put that leather on and go out there and be a factor. Also known for his longevity, which is something to be proud of, as the 0-1 is a strike, the fastball in your half 0-2. I believe yeah, but only you, Andrew yeah. McCutcheon played more games than Carlos Santana among active players. Back to players. But, you know, and McCutcheon was a guy that played every day, not that Santana didn't, but his was DHing. 0-2 in the air, right field. That's Kepler's territory. He ranges back. He's in front of the warning track. Max will pocket that one, and the inning is done. A couple of loud home runs, though. One for Diaz, one for Arosa Arena. And it's a 2-0 lead for Tampa Bay after one half inning. Right here at Lee Hill Sports Complex as we await the Twins back to the bottom of the first and invite you to take advantage of a really useful target field this year. Sit back and relax at the dock on the overlooking right field this season. It's a new exclusive seating area. It's presented by Winnebago Industries. It's available for groups of 12 or fewer. It includes six captain's chairs and food and beverage credit. Find out more at twins.com slash tickets. So that for Myers Islands, beaches and also neighborhoods, they have a way of leaving a lasting impression, reconnect over beautiful sunsets, share the taste of fresh gold seafood and savor every moment you spend together. Plan a vacation to write your own my Fort Myers story at visit fortmyers.com. I tell you, you get out and you look at the water, the beaches are great, and the boats are beautiful. If you just walk along some of the docks and the marinas and take a look at some of those boats, Danny, they are spectacular. As for our ball game, our television viewers get a look at Eddie Julian. Eddie Julian is on target, brought to you by Target, proud partner of the Twins. Julian leads off today, and he plays second base. Two hits the last time out for Eddie Julian, and his bat, Danny, has picked up right where it left off last season. Yeah, he's an exciting player. I think that he's a guy that, you know, quietly is going to be, I think, a superstar-type player. I think that one thing that he's worked on, I think the hitting part comes easy for him, it's the defense that he is really trying to improve on because, you know, in the past, you know, he'd be taken out of a ball game for a defensive specialist, and he feels that, you know what, I want to be able to finish the game with the nine I started with, so he's going to clean that up a little bit, which he's doing down here and working hard at it. Yeah, we see him every day during the regular season out early with Tony Diaz, and he's been putting in some long hours defensively here in spring training. He'll face Ryan Pepio. Fired from the Dodgers. Pepio's first pitch zips up and away. One ball, no strikes. Right-hander, 0-1 this spring. A third-round pick out of Butler. Last year, 2-1 with a 2-1-4 for Los Angeles. Pitch high, and it's 2-0. Tyler Glasnow, the big ticket item, headed out west to the star-studded Dodgers. And you can see the Dodgers at Target Field. The first homestand of the year. They're coming in April. And the 2-0 pitch is in for a strike. And Danny, I was amazed. I was talking with Kip Elliott the other night. He said still plenty of tickets available for that Dodgers game. Now, I know it's April. The weather can be iffy. You've got stuff going on. But this is a traveling circus, the likes of which baseball hasn't seen in a long time. As a strike called 2-2 two and two between Mookie at shortstop and Shohei Otani and Yamamoto taking the wraps off. Everywhere they go in the Cactus League, and they're now headed to Korea, it has been an absolute zoo. As a pitch wide to Julian, and surprise, surprise, it's three and two. Uh, so this is a great chance to get up close and see these guys at Target Field. Got a first baseman named Freddie Freeman, too, that's pretty good. You don't even get to Freddie till like the fifth or sixth guy, and he is a hitting machine. So yeah, the Dodgers coming to town early, and I would encourage you to get on out to Target Field. Three two pitch, foul away. I tell people, and I said this when Shohei was with the Angels, I said, if you don't take your kid, you don't want to be the grandparent who when 
your kid comes home with their kid says, yeah, mom and dad didn't take me to see Shohei Otani in his prime. Pitch down and in, and Eddie Julian, classic Julian leadoff at bat, will take a walk, and he's down at first base, Correa with bat. If you've got a chance to see a once in a lifetime, a generational type player, come do it. Get a sense of what the madness is all about. Carlos Correa. That's right-handed. Race play for two up the middle with Basabe and Rosario. The first pitch is down low. One ball, no strikes. Carlos Buxton on deck. We've seen this lineup quite a bit. Julian Correa, Buxton, Lewis, Kepler. You'll see Julian in that leadoff spot with right-handed starting pitchers. With lefties, probably a lot of Carlos Santana up there. But 1-0 swung through. Good slider. One ball, one strike. Carlos has had a solid spring, and more than anything, he's had a healthy spring. And you can just see how light and nimble he looks on his feet. The 1-1 one -one swung through, another good slider. And Danny, we've seen two different sliders from Pepio, kind of a harder slider in the upper 80s, and then that soft sweeper there at about 80 miles an hour. Yeah, they, they react different, both coming out of his hand, too. One's kind of a early hump in it, the other one's late. Let's go finish him! 2 nothing lead for Pepio to work with. Bottom of the first, nobody out, and there's that soft breaking ball, low and outside, two and two. Yeah, Pepio having trouble with command. I think that keep an eye on the catcher, the catcher where he sets up, and he's been misfiring a little bit as to where he wants to get that pitch thrown, and sometimes you, you do ask for a location on a breaking ball as well. He wants it away. Pitch delivered, and it is away, but too far off the plate for Reed Basner's liking, and the count full to the second straight Twins hitter. The catcher you reference is Alex Jackson. He was the sixth overall pick in the draft coming out of high school with the Mariners. Well-traveled, has never really been able to plant his spikes comfortably in a big league lineup. Well, let's see what happens here if they're sending him to stay out of the ground ball double play. Julian wanders away from first base. Nobody out. Throw over to first base, and Eddie will get that pristine white uniform all dirty. And because the fellas down in the clubhouse, they got a little extra detergent later on. I always like to get your uniform dirty early in the ballgame because then they get to play. Somebody comes to the game late. They go, oh, must, he must have done something. Pitch taken for a cold strike three on the outside corner. Danny, he went back to the harder slider there. And he nipped the outside corner with him. Correa knew it. He heads back to the dugout. Well, I'm not sure Carlos looking for something different, but kind of nods his head as he walks back to the dugout like, okay, good pitch, but that locked him up. Here's Byron Buxton. Hands held high for Buck, and he hits this ball foul over the third base grandstand, and out of play, it's 0-1. If this is the first glimpse you've had of the Twins this spring, the real story of the Twins is Byron Buxton this spring. And the story is that there's no story. He leads every drill. He's got a big smile on his face. He's running hard. He's been productive. And unhindered. He winds this ball to left field. The Rosarena late break has to play it on the hop. It's a base hit. Clean line drive for Buck, and they're on at first and second now for Royce Lewis. And then Danny, getting back to Byron, we've seen him uh, have a home run two triple game where he was just gliding around. But the, the play that stands out to me, he was trying to stay out of a double play here last week, and he dropped it into high gear for the first time all spring up the line and came out of it clean. Well, I think that's one of the indicators for him as to where he's at healthy-wise. But Ray's he's play got so two. many gears. <laughs> yeah, he's got more gears than you your know? typical than your typical uh, four-speed. Pitch low, one ball, no strikes. Royce Lewis already a grand slam this Grapefruit League. Surprise, surprise. He has two on here. A 1-0 is in the air to right field. Richie Palacio circling over near the line. Foul territory, and that one's well out of play. Royce Lewis, some interesting comments this week, talking about this season as what he feels is really his, his rookie year. He said, yeah, I played in whatever 50-plus games last year, had the heroics in the postseason, but he said, I've never had 
a full season. I've never had an opening day. And this pitch swung out of missed. It's one and two. When he said opening days, I think it was just they were in the training room or with the your rehab coach. And he says, I am definitely thinking about what it's going to be like standing on that line in Kansas City. The pageantry to fly over all of it. The one, two. That's a slow breaker and it's low, two and two. And I think Danny, the Twins organization, as well as the Twins fan base, dreaming on a full season of this young man in their lineup. That's going to be quite the treat. If he can stay healthy and play in that 130, 140 games, he's going to put up some big numbers. Yeah, his name will be known far and wide. The 2 2 breaking ball stacked into the left field corner. This should score some runs. The lead runner, Julian Lopin, home. Here comes Byron Buxton. He gets the windmill from Tommy Watkins. Throw to the plate, will never get it. We're tied at two on a two run double from Royce Lewis. Now, a couple of things on that play that should make you smile in Twins territory. One, the bat of Royce Lewis, so productive, drilling a ball into the left field corner. And two, the legs of Byron Buxton looking uh, nifty, coming around third base and sliding neatly across with the tying run. Again, so many gears. He was not, not as high gear. No, that was, he didn't have the DRS open on that. He was just cruising around third base. Lewis now the go-ahead run at second for Kepler. Max a couple of homers this spring. He takes his strike going one. No balls and a strike to Max Kepler. Leans back in the box. He hits a breaking ball high in the air near third. Curtis Mead, the young Aussie, shields his eyes with his bare hand and makes the catch in foul ground. And there are two outs now for the newcomer, Carlos Santana. No offense early here today in Fort Myers. 2-2 home first with Lewis at second base and two outs. Third meeting between the Twins and the Rays. Twins are 0-1-1 against Tampa Bay. Rays have broken out the powder blue jerseys and the bright yellow caps. The pitch from Pepio. And it's high for a ball. Pepio and Santana both began their careers with the Dodgers. Many years ago, Carlos was swapped to Cleveland for Casey Blake. He was a catcher back in those days. Takes a pitch up on the shoulders for a ball. It's 2-0. Remember briefly he was playing third base for them when they had a need at third? Well, he had that, that arm injury and then tried some third base, first base, and DH. But back at first base right now and pretty good. 2-0 is high in the air. Pepio's pointing at it, but nobody else is moving, and Pepio's simply pointing at the crowd. And with that foul ball, let's go back and take a look at Byron Buxton, because there's nothing prettier than watching Byron run. Look at him go, Dean. Good turn. Didn't miss stride. Hit touch in the bag. And we'll slide it home, make it look easy. Calm and control. The breaking ball misses in, and the count 3-0, and oh, pardon me, 3-1 and one to Carlos Santana. That's one where if he had wanted to open up the throttle, he could have caught Julian <laughs> coming around third. Edward just loping home. 3-1 pitch. Lined into right center field, back to base hit. It's Royce Lewis's turn to make a turn at third base. Another windmill from Tommy Watkins and another Twins run. RBI single, Carlos Santana, and the Twins take the lead. It's 3-2 here in the opening inning. So a little two-out hitting from the veteran Carlos Santana taking advantage of a 3-1 pitch. And now it's Ryan Jeffers who will bat for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, that's what you like about Santana. Three balls, one strike. Gets the count in his favor. But, you know, and that was a pitch kind of up and away. That could have been borderline ball four. But looking to drive in the runs, and he did just that. He's going to get Alec Jackson out to talk with Pepio. And it's worth pointing out. Here in the spring, they've changed the rule on mound visits, but I think we're four now is the limit. I don't think we've ever seen a team run out of, yeah. of mound visits, but now Kevin Cash is coming out as well. And this may also bring us to one of the Grapefruit League rules we've seen a couple of times already this spring, and that is the re-entry rule. When a guy has come out, we saw Bailey Ober do it 
have a minor league guy finish off the inning and bring him back out to start a new frame because Pepio is headed to the dugout. We've got ourselves a pitching change. Twins lead it 3-2. Santana at first. Jeffers the hitter. He'll face a reliever from Tampa Bay when we return on your home for Twins Baseball. Well, things started swimmingly for the Tampa Bay Rays today. A couple of solo homers off of Pablo Lopez, but the Twins have answered. It was a two-run double from Royce Lewis, then a two-out run scoring single from Carlos Santana, and the day is done perhaps for Ryan Pepio. Now, we've seen two instances, Nestor Cortez, Bailey Ober, where a pitcher left in the inning and then re-entered the ball game this Grapefruit League, so that's still on the table. But right now, Kevin Kelly will be the mound man for Tampa Bay. With four appearances, giving up five runs, four earned on eight hits. Originally was a Colorado Rockies Rule 5 pick from Cleveland, then traded to the Rockies for cash, or from the Rockies for cash. Last year, 5-2 and two with an ERA just north of 3 in 57 outings in his first big league season. Facing Ryan Jeffers, and the first pitch for the Twins backstop a strike in the count 0-1. And Ryan Jeffers, Danny, has had a dynamite camp. He missed about a week, came back, and promptly smacked two base hits. Yeah, he's hitting the ball all over the ballpark, going the other way well, and put a oh. couple in the seats. 0-1, swung on a miss. It's a 76-mile-an-hour breaking ball. It's 0-2. Oh, we talk about somebody playing well, and all of a sudden they get a guy that's throwing some soft stuff like that <laughs> can make you look foolish. No balls and two strikes to Jeffers. Here it comes, and it's low and outside. Another breaking ball, one and two. Last spring was all about the new stance and approach for Ryan. Spread out, no stride, big solid base. And this year, just some minor tweaks. The one, two. Off the plate again, a sinker at 90. Couldn't come back and find the outside corner. Jeffers prime for a big year. Vasquez has looked great this camp as well, so the Twins catching core is healthy. 2-2, two -two, high fly ball, center feed. Jake Magnum is out here, Mangum under it. He fights the Florida Sun briefly, makes the catch, and Kevin Kelly does the job, stranding Santana and ending the threat. But the Twins push three across. They lead 3-2 after one. Let's go play suits. Grapefruit League action fast and furious early today. It's 3-2 in favor of the Twins as catcher Alex Jackson faces Pablo Lopez here in the second. Lopez offers his first pitch and it's in for a strike. Good fastball from Pablo, his 25th pitch of the day. So a bit of a, a labor in the first. Gave up a couple of long balls, both on heaters. The 0-1. That's a breaking ball off the plate away. One ball, one strike. Alex Jackson has struggled with the bat throughout his career. As a breaking ball low. Again, drafted at the sixth overall pick back in 2014 out of Rancho Bernardo High School in San Diego. And he was ranked as one of the top prep bats in all of the draft. High school catchers, boy, they are tough to read as this one popped up. Back a second. Long one back for Julian. Kepler coming in, and Max will call off Eddie Julian and make the catch. Fast Max. Now he's multilingual. You think he called him off in French? You think he called him off in English? English. Yeah, we'll find out for, for sure. Francisco Mejia now hitting. He's back with the Rays. Had been with the Angels. DHing today, and he was once a prime prospect in the Cleveland system. One of the top catching prospects in all of baseball. Mejia takes a strike 0-1, and, and he has been crisscrossed all over the baseball landscape, Danny. He was always the big part of a bigger trade for an established guy, but never really established himself as that guy. Change up misses low, 1-1. One and, one. and wasn't Mejia with the Angels earlier and got 
DFA'd like real quick, really quick out of camp and real quickly picked up. The Rays have a, a real strong prospect core of catchers. There's a pitch just off the outside corner to count two and one. But looking for more production, well, maybe at the big league level. Mejia awaits. This one fouled off the fists. Two balls, two strikes. If you look at Mejia and just his transaction sheet, signed with Cleveland in 2012, he was part of the Adam Simber Brad Hand deal to San Diego. Called strike three. Mejia frozen on a changeup, and that's the second strikeout for Lopez, second out of the inning. The Padres packaged him up and shipped him to the Rays in the Blake Snell deal. Then a free agent, then with the Angels. Angels cut him loose, now he's back with the Rays. So he's been part of some big deals. And then he's now back thinking about that changeup on the bench. Here's Oslavis Pasabe. 23-year-old Venezuelan, cuts one into center field. Buxton on the move, dives for it, and makes the catch. Welcome back, Byron, we've missed you. One, two, three for Lopez in the top of the second. We'll take a break. Twins lead 3 2 back after this in the home for Twins baseball. Second with a strike called to Manny Margo and indeed the re-entry rule that we've seen used quite liberally here in spring training in effect Ryan Pepio back out there Pepio offers an 0-1 swung through by Margo the former Ray and the count is 0-2 So after loading up the pitch count a little bit and having Santana aboard Pepio exited for Kelly now He's back in there as a breaking ball fought up into the net and the count 0-2 It'll be Margo Castro and Julian for the Twins, leading the game three to two. Been an eventful spring for Manny Margo. He was in Arizona, was prepping to go to Korea, ended up coming here instead. Fouls another pitch straight back. And Danny, we watched Byron Buxton do what he does best there to end the previous half inning. First time we've seen him lay out this spring. Well, one thing that, you know, he does that well. Him and Kepler are probably the best in the league to come in but one thing I noticed about that the jump he got on the ball pitch popped up could be playable near first for Yandy Diaz he's into the coach's box and makes the grab one out and that is that you know he was in well good position right away but as soon as the ball left his bat and playing center field you get a read on a little bit better he was able to that first step break in real good and then just stayed with it that's a ball that maybe early in spring that just drops in front of you. You play it on a hop, but now gearing up a little bit. Now Byron's always wired to catch every single ball that comes off the bat, and a beautiful catch there. Really, Castro's had a nice spring. He stands in left-handed, takes a strike from Pepio. No balls and a strike on Willie. I think anytime you go out there, you want to be able to make a play, but the positioning that they have these guys in now. Ball low off speed. Really give the credit to the, a lot of the coaches as to where they set these guys up prior to that at bat. And that also really helps out, I think, in positioning guys and them being able to make some of those kind of plays. 1-1 one, one, taken for a strike. It's 1-2. and two. But Byron's been making them for a long time before they had all the analytic coaches telling them where to play. The way he covers ground out there, you could probably have him sitting on the top of the fence and he could, he could catch a lot of those balls. 3-2 Twins lead. Castro batting ninth today. The one-two skips up in the dirt. How about if you have two Byron Buxtons and you play one in left center, one in right center, and you can, the rules does that you can bring an outfielder to play in the infield. You can't take an infielder right. to go play the outfield. But he could play on the grass, like right behind short or whatever. Yes. Ball on the ground towards second base. Flagged by Rosario in the former shortstop. Makes a little bit of a loosey-goosey throw over the first base, but they do get the out. And the fan favorite Twins passes back. It starts at just $59 a month. You receive ballpark access to every home game this season with options to upgrade the seats. Secure your spot at twins.com slash twins pass. So it's a great rate 
it gets you in the ballpark and you can kind of move around and see the game from the various vantage points in the ballpark. And if you really want to get cozy and settle in, you can upgrade two specific seats as Eddie Julian takes the first pitch for ball one. He walked in his first trip. Pepio taps the pitching plate and delivers off the plate inside. Two balls and no strikes. There is one super vocal Rays fan who has found the crowd mic. 2-0 pitch to Eddie. A little breaking ball and he tried to hold up and did not. We're going to ring him up on the appeal down to third. 2-1. Red batting gloves for Julian. Leans back in the box. Very quiet stance. And he watches a strike on the inner half. The count two and two. That was a changeup. Very calm in the box, Danny. Different approach also with Pepio out there, too. He's in a little bit of a rhythm right now. Two two is wide, and the count full three and two. So two plate appearances, and Pepio has to be thinking, how many pitches is this guy yeah. going to see? Another guy that's so relaxed, not afraid to hit with two strikes on him. Boy, what a classic leadoff profile. You know, he's got the pop to hurt you and get you on the board with one swing. But he'll also see a lot of pitches. High on base. Grounds this one towards second base. Rosario has it. This throw is on target to Diaz at first. And Pepio returns with a 1-2-3. Bottom of the second. 3-2 twins after two. We'll be joined by Chris Paddock next on our home for Twins Baseball. Top of the third at Lee Hell Sports Complex, 3-2 Twins. Pablo Lopez climbs the hill. Chris Atterbury alongside Danny Gladden. And we're very excited to be joined for the third inning by Twins starting pitcher Chris Paddock from the Twins dugout. Good afternoon, Chris. Thanks for joining us. A little warm down there today? Jake Magnum slaps one to left field, the first pitch from Pablo Lopez, so the leadoff man is aboard. And, you know, Chris, you had spring training in Arizona for years. Uh, you know, your, your second turn here in Florida, and you had some rehab work, to, you know, as well. But but what's the difference between the two, the Cactus League versus Grapefruit League? Players around both leagues, I think we always talk about the travel. You know, Arizona, you're traveling up to maybe 40 minutes, uh, depending on where you're at. In Florida, you could travel up to three hours. So uh, it's it's wear and tear on the body for sure. Um, but, man, it's hard to beat this weather in Florida um, early spring. Yandy Diaz takes a strike, and it's 0-1. Diaz with a home run off of Lopez in his first plate appearance, and he takes a look at a strike on the outside corner. All right, pitcher to pitcher, Pablo Lopez has been working on a bunch of different things, different sequences here this spring. Break down Pablo from another pitcher's perspective. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one, I'm super excited to, to follow his footsteps this year. You know, he's, uh, he's a heck of a ball player, um, one of our leaders in the clubhouse, I'm sure, from the pitching aspect of things. But I definitely, you know, watching him over the course of the last three or four weeks, um, he's working on his sweeper, working on, you know, some change-ups in the zone. Uh, but, you know, now that we're only, I think it's 12 days until the season starts, you know, this outing, he's probably just going out there with his strengths and, and just going out there to compete. But uh, for me, man, it's, uh, it's, it's being pretty cool to, you know, be one of the guys this year in our starting rotation. Um, you know, all of us following behind Pablo's footsteps, a guy that's been a workhorse, a guy that's been healthy and available for us. Uh, so I'm just super, super blessed to be a part of these guys and uh, super excited to follow his footsteps. One ball and two strikes to Yandi Diaz. Again, that's the voice of Chris Paddock. You're going to be seeing a lot of Paddock this year in the Twins rotation after he returned from an injury with a scintillating postseason performance out of the bullpen as Diaz swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Let's start there. Just health-wise, having an offseason that was an actual offseason, not a rehab offseason, had to change things tremendously for you. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this uh, going under the knife for the second time, uh, 
you know, back in May of 2022 was, was pretty devastating for me personally. Um, you know, this game is, is changing dramatically. And, uh, you know, nowadays it's, you know, a matter of time before guys get hurt, especially pitchers, um, which, you know, it just sucks. Uh, but, you know, I took it for a grain of salt, kept, you know, kept a good head on my shoulders, stayed positive uh, day in and day out. And like you said, I made it made it personal in January of last year to make sure that I can come back in September and help uh, help our group win. And, uh, man, it was awesome to you know, get a little bit of uh, teasers out there towards the end of the season, um, late September, and then obviously going into October um, versus the Blue Jays and then Houston. It was just an uh, awesome experience to see the twin fans and their support and then obviously just, you know, be a small piece of a special group last year. Yeah, and an awesome pickup move by Pablo Lopez. He catches the youngster, Mangan Weenie, there, and it's a 1-3-4 put out at second base as Rosario is still awaiting a 1-0 pitch. But I think, uh, you know, going off of what your original question was is, man, I, I gained so much confidence uh, last year coming out of the bullpen of, of just being a competitor again and going out there and gaining that confidence. Um, and obviously having some success personally that, that I took that into the off season of the four months um, back home in Texas. And, uh, you know, my goal this year is to just be present in the moment and be available. Um, I know that there's going to be times where I want uh, to stay out there and, and have Rocco, you know, not come get the ball. But uh, the reality of it is I want to be out there in October and help this group group win, and especially coming off, you know, I think I threw eight to ten innings last year, and my goal is 150. You know, that's, that's a big jump, especially in this game, every fifth or sixth day grabbing that ball. So just, you know, leaning on Pablo, the guy that's you know, has the ball today for us, um, you know, you look at his stats and, over the last three or four years, he's been available. And he knows what it takes to keep his body healthy um, and get to that 200 inning mark. So definitely going to lean on him for some advice. Um, but man, I'm just I'm super excited. I haven't been more more excited or more prepared for a season um, as I enter my sixth season in the big leagues. No, there's a strike three called on Ahmed Rosario. Can you stick around? We hang out a little bit next half inning. Absolutely. All right, that's Chris Paddock. Pablo Lopez fans appear in the third. Twins lead three two after two and a half. I'm home for Twins baseball. Twins lead 3-2. It's the home third. Carlos Correa digs in. Pepio delivers, and Correa skies one in the air to center field. Jake Mangum is under it. Gravity does its thing. Mangum makes the catch. One pitch, one out. Chris Paddock kind enough to stick around and join us as Buxton digs in. And, Chris, I understand you got your, your hunting dogs with you here in Florida. You travel with, it, with your whole pack. Yeah, so, uh, you know, they're actually not down here in Florida with me. I actually make a, a detour pit stop every spring training to Arkansas. Uh, I have a guy up there. His name is Logan Thomas uh, with Breeze Hill Retrievers, and he does a lot of the dirty work for me, get those dogs ready for the upcoming hunting season. As uh, Buxton unloads to left field, that one is up, and that one is off the top of the wall. Byron takes a cruise around first base, and we are getting the full Byron Buxton experience here today. Two hits, nearly a home run, a diving catch. Other than that, I mean, he's just gonna hang it up. But yeah, just kind of going back off of that is, you know, I have uh, a German short hair pointer and I have two British labs that, uh, you know, those athletes, the four-legged athletes um, that I call my, my best friends back home for hunting season. Um, it's, it's always a good thing coming back in October and, and getting those ready to work for the upcoming hunting season. Um, which I'm super excited about. Well, I have a, G I have a GSP house myself, so <laughs> I understand the energy required there as Royce Lewis fouls one straight back. They have a, they have a personality of their own, man. I don't even know how to explain it. They, they need to be involved in everything. Exactly. Yes, very intelligent. Pepe are working here to Royce. Royce doubled home a pair, and he takes a strike at 0 2. Chris, you've been around the game a long time. This young man, Royce Lewis, he's got that special something about him, though, doesn't he? He does, man. It's, uh, man, it's it's one of a kind. You know, he, you know, being a former player for the San Diego Padres, he reminds me a lot of Tatis, uh, kind of that spark plug for us. Um, when he's going, the whole team's going. And watching his success last year, um, coming back from his injury, was was something special. And then every time the base is loaded, all the <laughs> Twin fans, you know, y'all can expect four runs to go across the board. He pops up here to second base, so it's up to Max Kepler to expand. 
the just, conversation. Just one of the you know most uh, clutch guys I've ever been around. You know, some people, you know, there's that saying, "Pressure's a privilege," and he uh, he absorbs it every time and, and goes out there and does something special. So he, he keeps us on our our toes as well as the fans. Kepler batting, he can't hold up, and the count is 0-1 to Max. He fouled out back in the three-run first. Chris, when do you have throw next? What's your schedule? I'm actually throwing tomorrow. Uh, I've been a road warrior here uh, this spring training. Oh, so they, <laughs> they, oh. they Yeah, I've, I've been to Jupiter. I've been to Atlanta a couple times. Uh, but they're actually catching me a break. I'm going to be throwing five innings on the backfield. Uh, minor league game to mask. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there so, go. so you're not making that Dunedin trip. <laughs> I, uh, I'm saving six <laughs> hours under my belt, so um, you know can't complain about that one. No, I, I'm looking at you on the on the service time list. I think Dunedin's out of your realm right now. I think you need to stay stay put. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And one one's a strike in the count. Hey, Chris, points. has the staff sat down with you? You had mentioned earlier about 150 innings this year. Have you guys mapped it out yet during the first maybe half of the season? As to you, where you're to slot in? Uh, we have not. Um, you know, I think the, the overall goal is, is, you know, talking with Rocco and, and Pete a little bit briefly is just like being present in the moment for me this year is whenever they give me that ball is making sure I'm prepared and ready to go. Um, but just, you know, hitting off that, I know that there's going to be some games and some situations to where we're going to have to cap some innings uh, for me, especially over, you know, 30 to 35 starts this season. Um, you know, I just, my personal goals have always been kind of that independent guy is I'm, I'm going to go out there and try and get 140, 150 innings. And all right. We appreciate your time. Kepler strikes out, strands bucks in a second. Chris, you have fun on those backfields tomorrow, and thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. And Twin fans, be excited for a 2024 season. That's Chris Paddock. We've played three, three, two twins on your home for Twins Baseball. Today's Twin Spring training game brought to you by a local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Great to have Chris Paddock with us in the third. Great to hand things over to Dan Gladden in the fourth. Uh, thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. It's going to be a Rosarena of leading off. He homered last time up. Fly ball center field. Buck long run back track. He'll pull up. That ball is out of here. Straight away central. Byron got a good jump on it. Just came up empty, so... Two homer day for a Rosarena who has 23 hit last year. And that's tied it up 3 3. Four of his five hits this spring now extra bases. He does his arms cross pose. And yeah. Crash home plate. I forgot that he's the guy that'll stop, I think, at third base. Cameras on him and does a little pose. And that's a slow trot. Here's Curtis Mead and the pitch down and away. Joined now in the booth here. We got Dan and Maria. Is she here? She yep. Went? Okay. And you guys are with the uh, Tiki Cruises. Yes, sir. Nautical Tiki Cruises. What's the difference between that and maybe a different uh, cruise around here? Well, number one, I got to start with our staff. We got awesome captains with uh, three of them being from Minnesota. So they set us apart. Our boats are beach cat catamaran boats they have a full service bathroom on them so it's a step above the rest we're in with margarita deville and snug harbor restaurant on the beach a little tap out by Mead off the bat there that's going to get Palacios to the bat what what kind of cruise i mean is it a morning cruise you do the uh, obviously the sunset cruises would be yeah so we do anywhere from a 90 minute cruise to a six hour cruise we can take you to the beaches lover's key run you on the outside of the beach around in front of all the resorts i think you took maybe it was uh, the lover's key that Corey went on last Sounds year. like about right. Yeah. That's a great trip. And how, how many how many people can get on a, a particular cruise? Yeah, so we have two different boats. We have a six passenger and then we also have an 18 passenger that we do, you know, all the parties for the birthdays, the anniversaries, the bachelorette, bachelor parties, you name it. We'll, oh, we'll, we'll make it fit for you. Yep. And are you a captain too? Yes, sir. And you said you got a couple of them from Minnesota that come down? Yes, sir. Oh. Do you guys run this? Uh, cruises all year round seven days a week wow Look, this ob obviously is big season right now oh yeah yeah it's very good Palacios bats yeah. here the ball to dirt how'd you get started in this with not a good well I mean I've been in the boating industry all my life I've got uh, 
years and years of experience. I've done charters, I've done private charters for big yachts. And uh, when we got into this, we just decided we wanted to have the right boat. So, you know, we got the catamarans that are smooth, stable rides. And the bathroom was important to me. <laughs> yeah. lady's got to have a bathroom. I give her a lot of credit for that. All right. She's not the only one. Yeah, exactly. Drink a couple beers and you know what happens. Yeah. How affected were you by the uh, hurricane that came through a couple years ago, Ian? Uh, I mean, it was pretty devastating. You know, two of our boats got tossed up on docks. Um, we had just started the business six months prior to that. And then, you know, our personal home had two foot of water in it. Um, but we were fortunate there was a lot of people that did a lot worse. So we're back and running, so we're happy. Yeah, this community was amazing in their ability to gather to help everybody get back to where they needed to be. Yeah. Now, the name Tiki Cruises, I, I'm imagining palm fronds and uh, and the whole nine yards. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a true tiki boat. It's got a bar down the middle, both of them, with yeah, seating for six and seating for 18. Um, it's yep. got a tiki thatched roof. We got Bluetooth stereo, so you can play your own music. Yeah. We got coolers. We got ice. We make it a party. You know, the, the, the description of that reminded me of some of those those bar hopping cars in downtown. With the, you have to pedal. The pedal pump. Yeah, you don't have to pedal this thing, do you? No, no we do the pedaling part. <laughs> so we got the licensed captains that run you around. You have fun, and we worry about the rest. Where do you Where do you go out of? Where, where, what so, marina? Yeah, so we go out of Snug Harbor Marina, and we go out of Margaritaville. Um, we run, you know, the Starro Bay. Hit down the right field line. That's well hit. That's in the seats. So Palacios with a home run. That's four home runs. Pablo Lopez has given up here this afternoon. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. Now it's 4-3. Yeah, so, you know, we give them a three-hour cruise. We can do a lot with that. We can go to Lover's Key. We can take them on the outside of the beach on their way back through, bring them up through Estero Bay, by all the shrimp boats, all the restaurants, all the bar. We can take a bar hop. Whatever you want to do, we'll make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can the customize, customize, you can customize yeah. the tour. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, no fishing on off, off your boats? Uh, no, we don't have any. Uh, but would you know where all the snook and where all the places to go? Could you recommend? I personally do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we can get in between innings here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. It's popped up right side, foul ball souvenir. It's nauticaltiki.com. That's the website. Is that the best way for folks to get in touch with you guys and start yep, getting into the mean, process of planning a trip? Yeah, you can book everything online. It's very simple. You go on, you pick your date, you pick your cruise, you pick your time, you pick your stuff, and if you have a problem, you call my wife, Maria, and she'll help you set it up. If it's a group outing, do you get a little bit more of a discount than just a one person going? Um, not really. I mean, it's kind of, uh, you know, we do some stuff for some bigger parties once in a while, but I mean, we're very fairly priced. I mean, for what we charge to go out and do this is peanuts. One, one person, Dan, you're going out alone? You just going to you just you no. know, take the bar out? <laughs> no, but I'm just wondering if me and, a, you know, you and a friend go out and there's already 10, 12 people on the... On the you know, you get both boats. Yeah. Grand both boats. So the thing, the thing with the big boat is that's guaranteed your group. It's a minimum of eight people. The small boats can be anywhere from one to six people that travel together. Jackson's bad in here. He keeps fouling them off. He's in a hole. The ball's in two strikes. I imagine dolphins, manatee, you must see everything. Right? Yeah, I mean, the good thing for us is, you know, we're down in Fort Myers, Florida. That's one of the areas that has dolphins years round. Most other places don't have it. They migrate to other areas, so we're very fortunate. I mean, it's a million-dollar question if you're going to see them or not. But, you know, we hope that you do. Swung on a miss on a fastball outside. And the way people react to seeing the dolphins, I think, probably never gets old. Like, I, we had a little fishing trip out on the water, and the dolphins followed us around all day, and you never get tired of them. Never get tired of watching I mean, personally, I've seen them for years, and <laughs> I never get tired of them. And the same with the sunset. They're always different and amazing. Is the, the Sunset Cruise probably your most popular one? It is. Pitch just missed outside. Well, he is batting. He's DH and he struck out looking his first time up. You enjoy baseball? Absolutely. I'm, well, you know, I'm from St. Louis. So. Oh, boy. Oh, that's all right. We won't go there, but, you know, <laughs> we just love the sport. We love the entertainment. We love the people. It's popped up center field. Byron fighting the sun a little bit. Makes the catch. Here, though, on the top of the fourth inning. Two solo homers. The Rays now with a 4-3 to three lead. And we appreciate uh, Dan and Maria stopping by. I appreciate it. We appreciate Thank the you opportunity. Man. Don't leave. i got to get that location on that. You got it. We'll be back. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Back here at Lee Health Sports Complex, it's Santana leading off. 
pitch turns him around up, up and in. One ball, one strike. That was nice, Dan and Marie Hamilton with that nautical tiki cruises. That sounds like something. I forgot to ask him if it's. Said he had a bar right down the middle, right? right is down that, the middle. Is it, so why bring your own, right? Yeah, it's, I think they take care of you. Well, he left his card. Huh. Sunset cruise, huh? And that's in the dirt skips to the backstop. Yeah, and we were checking in with him off camera. I said, you're, you're from St. Louis. How, how do you end up a man of the seat? And uh, he said he came down and never went back. You got your hot spots for the snook? Do you hook you up? Yeah, I okay. mean, I know where to, to get the boat, but it's once you leave the marina where you want to go. Santana with a count of two balls, two strikes. Just high and away. Santana always gives you that good at bat. You know, it's not too often that Carlos will, what well, we always say, get yourself out. You go back to the bat rack, I got myself out. He didn't get me out. You know, he always gives you a good competitive at bat. And he fouls that off and he's still upset at himself right now and upset that he, he got a pitch to hit and he fouled it off. I think when you see he and Eddie in the same lineup, you're going to throw some pitches. I mean, don't come in expecting yeah. to be real efficient with your pitches against those guys. I will tell you, though, back in the third inning. And there's a walk. Lead off walk, tied run. Nice job. First walk issued. The Pepio. And, it, uh, and I mentioned something to Kyle when we had Chris Paddock on there. And first batter, Carlos Correa, swings at the first pitch. Byron Buxton swings at the first pitch, double. Lewis swings at the first pitch, pops it up. Kepler. Went to swing at the first pitch, check swing, held up. So the plan for the offense was to come out and swing on this guy early. And almost capitalized on it. There's a pitch to Jeffers. It's in there for a strike. So now I'm curious, and I think that with Carlos Santana, you're not going to have that same approach or ask him to go ahead and swing as Jeffers lifts this one into right field on the warning track, and it's going to be caught. Now the beauty of what Santana can do, and I think now in year two we're going to see more of it from Julian, is that you get a reputation for taking a lot of pitches. And that doesn't mean that you can't lie in ambush there for a first pitch heater right across the belt buckle. And I think we'll see those guys pick their spots effectively throughout the course. You know, I, I agree. And having a guy, you know, myself as a leadoff hitter, you're always up there to take pitches to let the other hitters see what he has. Now this was foul tipped. Go batting, he popped up foul territory his first time up. And sometimes you can take too many pitches, you get yourself in a hole. And now you're playing defense with the bat. That'd be a right hander delivers, and that one's fouled back. Ahead, no balls and two strikes. That got beat up a little bit in the first inning, gave up three runs after. Pablo Lopez gave up two in the first on solo homers. Giving up four runs, all solo home runs. And a pitch, and again, foul back. Mark Go had a fastball there, no balls and two strikes. I love this is a big addition right here. He's going to be able to play some left field. That right handed bat we heard about really all off season. And it wasn't until here spring training that the deal was made. And here's a guy that. Familiar with the Tampa Bay Rays? Yeah, well, I go the right handed bat in the outfield, and then Santana, you know, right handed bat traditionally has hit better as a righty against lefties, and certainly can hit left handed against righties as well. And the 2 fouled off again. Uh, and I think when Polanco was trading, that element of having a switch hitter who can give you competitive at bats against both from both sides of the plate. I think it just gives you so much more versatility in your lineup, and I think that adding Santana as a switch hitter, would, that was a big piece of that puzzle. Check swing, he went around on a changeup. Tried to hold up, just a third strikeout for Pepio. You know, if you go out and you get a Reese Hoskins and he bats right-handed, he said they'll tune in with Kirill off. Well, a switch hitter, now you can play him alongside an Alex Kirilov if you want to load up against a righty. Or you can leave him in there with that good glove against a lefty. I just feel like that the value of a competent switch hitter is through the well, Plus an on-base guy. Mm -hmm. High on-base percentage. So that's why we've seen 
Santana in that leadoff spot. There's a guy, Castro. Big year last year, like his skill set. He's another switch hitter that occasional pop, great speed, provides that that running speed part of the game. Still 33 bases last year for Minnesota. And again, in a game that's so specified. My strength, best position to succeed, platoon this, platoon that, match up this, match up that. A competent guy from both sides of the plate is, is just huge. It's a breaking ball. Got the plate, but just a little bit low. I think what Chilly Davis could do is a DH right throughout his career, just for his ability to perform from both sides of the plate. When he came over there, he, he solidified that number five spot. I think he had, he had Puckett hit three, Herbeck four, and then there was switcher to Chilly. And a pitch. Inside a strike. Castro jumped back off the plate, thinking that ball was inside. Might have tried to play it into a ball, but you hear what Levers talk about pockets. You know which pocket they want me to face in a lineup. And when you can put a switch hitter in there, the pocket forces you to make some tough decisions. That's a swing and a miss. Like, let's say you've got a Julian, and then you got a Correa, and then you got a Santana. Well, okay, am I bringing my left here to get Eddie, but then two righties? Or if I bring it a righty, Eddie's got an advantage, and then it's righty, then another lefty, you know? So it's close to that switch hitter. Yeah. We'll so I, I bring my left hander in to get the lefty out, but then I've got a righty, and then a switch hitter. Yeah, force you to, to make a decision. Runner goes, and it's strike three looking. As Castro strikes out looking, they strand one. We've completed four. And it's the Tampa Bay Rays for Twins three. We'll be back. You're listening to Twins Baseball. This car. Pablo Lopez out here, top half of the fifth inning. He'll face Mejia in the first pitch down and away, ball one. Breaking ball there from Pablo Lopez. Pablo's given up now five hits. Four of them have left the yard. I think this is Basabi, Danny. I think Mejia made the last out the previous half inning. Yeah, I'm sorry, Basabi bats. We were dreaming of Snook and Tiki bars, so it's easy to see where we would get off track. Got the score right, right? 4-3. And a pitch. Ground ball down the third baseline just foul. Twins have a new left fielder. That's Trevor Larnick out there now. So Willie Castro ended the inning and he departs. And what he has to do is go over and shag that foul ball. <laughs> Welcome to the game, Trevor. Well, he's excited to be out there. And a pitch. We're going to miss it. The Tampa Bay Rays, they won 99 games last year. They've always been in the, the hunt, if not in the playoffs. And you can't count on, out again this year. But what a division that they're in. And, you know, this used to be a team that was like the, the doormat for, for other teams to kind of pad their stats on. That foul. And that started to change for about 2007. Remember, it was Kansas City for the Twins. Yeah. We, we, you know, 19 games, we'd play with them, we'd win 17 of them. beat them up every year. And yeah. when they turned the corner, it meant something to them when they started beating up the big brother a little bit. Well, a little bit, yeah. They went back-to-back -back World Series and won it. Looked at foul. The Rays have been to a couple of World Series as well. Have not won yet. They have not gotten over that final hurdle, but... Always competitive with a rotating cast of characters every single year. I was reading an article the other day, and I, you'll probably know the answer to this, but there's three teams that have never won a World Series. Tampa. San Diego. San Diego. Seattle. Seattle. And Seattle, I believe, is the only team left that has never been to a World Series. Nobody out, two balls and two strikes. Lopez taking his time, and now Jeffers sets up away. And strike three on the outside corner. Kind of a nice job there by Jeffers to frame that. 
That's strikeout six now. Well, the Rays made some moves. You know, they shipped Tyler Glass now, who was a phenomenal pitcher. And they sent him to the Dodgers. And Pepio, who's pitched today, is part of the return in that. And you know what they're doing is they're banking on getting multiple players back and see if they can get on more than one. Just right taken, but that's been their, their MO. Right. That's how they function. And you think about when they got Glasnow, it was part of a big haul that they got for Chris Archer, who was at the end of his line, and they were able to, to fleece the Pirates. Here's a walk. Strike two quickly. I'd like you to check out the Select Heartland Chevy dealers. All you have to do is log on to ChevyDealOnline.com and find that dealer near you. There's, there's teams like that, like the Pirates, that you can, you know, go up against when they're not playing well and be able to, you know, I don't know, Chris Archer for Glasnow. There was other players yeah. involved, but... And all the good ones came to Tampa. Yes. And the ground ball, the hold short. It's going to be fielded by Correa from balance throw in time. And he's pretty to watch at shortstop. Makes it look very easy. You know, you mentioned the Pirates, Michael A. Taylor to the Pirates. I saw that. One year deal. He'd been holding out. He wanted multiple years. And he saw what the market was doing. And he said, I better get into camp. And there's a professional that you can play into to that lineup of young kids. Yeah, I think that they're holding on to him, too. You know, a lot of teams will sign those veterans like that. Trade Come trade deadline. Mm -hmm. There's a team out there might be looking for somebody. Fly ball down the left field line. Larnick giving chase near the line. He'll run it down. Nice play, Trevor Larnick. And a nice job, Pablo Lucas. Three up three down with a strikeout. Going to the bottom of the fifth inning to be the top of the order. Julian Correa. Buxton, Twins Trail 4 3. On your home for Twins Baseball. Some of the goodies here at the ballpark. Gorgeous afternoon here at Tampa Bay making the trip down. New pitcher is going to be Emmanuel Rodriguez. And a first pitch swing and a miss by Julian. Helmet falls off. Emmanuel Rodriguez. He's had seven innings. Allowed just three runs, one earned. Made 15 relief appearances last year. It was a triple-A Durham and it acquired from the Cubs on August 1st and there's strike two call Julian a walk scored in the first grounded out to the second baseman to end the second inning and that one skips away from the catcher Danny, a new first baseman as well. Nick Meyer is taking over for Yandy Diaz. Diaz had the leadoff homer off Lopez, one of four solo shots today. A look at the mustachioed first baseman. Played his college ball for Brooks Lee's father at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. There's one, two. That one's tap foul to the backstop. He's a little older, 27, so I would imagine while he was a Mustang, Brooks was probably a high school kid running around. Taking infield, probably in the cage all the time. And that's in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Brooks will feature in our spring breakout game, Danny, in our television audience. And stick around for about a half hour or so after this game on Valley Sports North Twins prospects versus the Rays prospects. That was high and away, full count, 3 2. Julian with another extended at bat. Third full count. Well, you watch him in the box. He's got great plate coverage. He chokes up a little bit. That's the elbow guard, chin guard. But you know, he, he picks just out with a shoulder there. And there's the walk. I would say that Julian... 
probably him, Carlos Santana, the leadoff spot yep. in this lineup for the Twins. And Eddie's going to call it a day. He will be lifted for Jake Rucker, pinch running at first base. So three at bats, saw a ton of pitches. I think he's up 20 pitches and three at bats, walked twice, and Rucker will take over at first base. You know, you might say, well, doesn't Julian need some practice maybe running the bases? That's one thing that the Twins have done well in spring training. They brought kids up from the minor leagues to play the positions, and they have Julian Correa, Buxton, guys running the bases in situations where the coach is hitting balls to the outfield in the gap. And this was fouled off into the netting right side. No balls are two strikes to Carlos Correa. And they're going hard in these drills. Yes. Full bore, and they're getting a lot of work done in a short amount of time. Very impressive. And, and it's a combination of the players being able to pick up work with the third base coach. You know, and the third base coach being able to, yes, go, no, don't go. And that one's down and in. Takes a pitch. So and one ball, work, two strikes. That's work for Tommy Watkins, as well as for the players that are there. Right. There's Tommy. So we'd asked him, still he's known as mayor of Fort Myers. And that was tapped foul. And asked him about, you know, you still go out around here and people say, hey, Tommy. He said, not as much. He's kind of transplanted himself, no longer living here in Florida, but talk somebody that's so upbeat all the time. He's got energy. Again, fisted foul. We talked about the drills in addition to the base running. You know, early ground ball work. Julian's always a part of that. Correa will be a part of that. Tony Diaz is tireless working with the infielders. Tommy will be out there. We've seen him with a tennis racket, <laughs> tennis yep. balls to outfielders. They'll line up the, the, sh the machine and shoot pop flies up for the outfielders. There's a line drive one hopper to the second baseman. He'll go to short. Back to first in time to double up Correa. Nice turn by the Tampa Bay Rays, but that was well stroked off the bat of Carlos Correa. All the only thing missing for Byron today is a home run, Danny. We've seen the diving catch. We've seen a single. We've seen a double off the top of the fence and left just shy of reaching the burn. See if he doesn't swing early. Last time up, remember the approach, first pitch swinging. And he takes a bender in there for a strike. And I think the Rays thinking the same thing because it was a first pitch slider. Bottom of the fifth inning, 4 3 Tampa. You know, swing and a miss, chased one down and out of the zone, and now no balls and two strikes. Got a sight of him diving and making that catch earlier today. Cruising around and scoring easily from first on a double. Those are two things that should put a hop in your step in Twins territory today. Has to protect 0-2. And a pitch. Tap foul in the Twins dugout. Yeah, Byron is a guy that when he's hot, he can be very, very good and carry a team. Buck last year, mid hit 17, drove in 42. And again, tap foul, trying to come in on him. And still quick inside to foul it off. I think Byron also thrives in, in this makeup clubhouse wise. Carlos Correa, you know, is a very outspoken guy, demands a lot of attention. Royce Lewis is kind of like a light the moths flock to. And I think Byron likes the ability to just go about his business there in his corner locker, lead by example, put in all the work and come out and play and, and kind of leave the spotlight to some of those other guys. That's with the count of one and two. Strike three, a nice bender on the outside corner. So Rodriguez comes in, walks one, gets the double play and strikes out Buck. Five in the books, it's four to three. Tampa Bay on your home for Twins Baseball. Top of the sixth inning, 4-3 Tampa Bay. New pitcher will be Jay Jackson. He's going to face Ahmed Rosario. A couple changes for the Twins. Give them to you shortly. First pitch swing, and he pops it up. Jeffers right out in front of home plate. Calls down the third base line and puts it away. Nice little first pitch 
Strikeout. Hey, don't miss the excitement of opening day. Twins are going to host the Cleveland Guardians on April on Thursday, April 4th. First 10,000 fans on April 4th as well. As Saturday, April 6th, you're going to receive Twins opening weekend beanie cap. It's presented by your local Northland Ford dealers. Get your tickets at twins.com. Sure, this is Rosarena's spot, but I believe that's Sean Diaz. Sean Diaz. John. J H O N. Left handed batter. And a big swing to miss. Pablo says, well, where was John Diaz when I was facing the Rosarena? He was hitting two home runs. Uh, Jackson's going to play a big role on the club. And that one missed down. A multi-inning guy, I think, a reliever. You see his spring training numbers, his ERA is sub two. and A guy who's come back from pitching in Asia. He's got a lot of innings in that arm, but a veteran. A jam shot right center field. Kepler's not going to catch that. That's going to land. There's a center fielder hopping over to cut it off. I get you those changes, as you mentioned, Danny. Maddox Houghton is now the center fielder, the young man from Lipscomb. And he is in the middle with Larnick and Kepler on either side. Royce Lewis still the third baseman. The shortstop is Will Holland. He's taken over for Carlos Correa. And Jake Rucker, who pinch ran for Eddie Julian, will play at second base. Santana still at first. Jeffers still catching. And we believe this is still Curtis Meek. It is. It's taken on the inside for a strike. Pretty much change up sliders. He's a fastball with Jackson, but his go to pitch is that slider. And he's got a good one at times. Great righty righty splits throughout his career. Swung on him. That's a hit and run that's popped up, though, in center field. Houghton over to pick it up and quickly get it back into the infield. So a fly ball out on a hit and run. Diaz back to first base. And here is Palacios who gave the raise that four to three lead. Go Diaz, go Diaz. So Jackson coming up some hits. He does get pitch in trouble. Fastball on the inside corner. There it is, 90. He'll touch 92 maybe. It was in Toronto a year ago, well-traveled, and Twins think they can find a spot for him as potentially a multi-inning guy, fifth, sixth inning guy. And a pitch, check swing, little number first base side. It's going to go just foul as Santana picks it up. Well, Danny, that number reminds me, Caleb Fielbar has yet to throw in a game this spring. He warmed up full uniform, went over to Steli Field adjacent here and threw to Matt Walner and Kyle Farmer earlier today. The hamstring that's kept him out of games has not bothered his pitching at all, but he, he felt like he couldn't run to first, cover first. One of the first guys he faced, Farmer kind of squibbed one like that back towards the mound, and Caleb looked great. Pounced off the hill, grabbed it, picked it up, and threw to first base. He struck out Walner, gave up a homer to Farmer, then faced Walner a little more, so he did get through that live session today on the adjacent Rick Stel Mazic field. Lost lost the runner goes, and the pitch again fouled back. Yeah, one of the funny things about that is so Walner fell off about four pitches in a row. And from Steli Field, those foul balls, they end up in the paying customers, like down and they're walking into the big ballpark or out in the parking lot. Maybe having a bratwurst and a beverage. And Matt Walner was sending souvenirs into the crowd as Caleb threw his live. Diaz, run faster! Now Jackson ahead, no balls and two strikes, not running this time. And that's fouled back. Well, the fan was telling him to run faster. I don't know why he wasn't going. I want to see the matchup with Diaz at first. His speed matched up against Jeffers behind the plate. Jeffers Je is Jackson. Well this Jackson's not the quickest guy. And Jeffers is in for it. He, he wants that, that opportunity. And a quick throw over miss, and he got him on first base. <laughs> nice job, Jackson. He picked him off, so Jeffers not going to see the matchup. 
as he's picked off. One hit, nobody left on base. Bottom of the six coming up is the Rays four. Twins three. We'll be back. You're listening to Twins Baseball. A new pitcher going to be Sean Armstrong, right hander. He'll be facing Royce Lewis. First pitch swing and pulls it down the left field line. That's foul. Right hander Sean Armstrong. We've got changes defensively for the Tampa Bay Club. Looks like John Diaz stays in the game after getting picked off. He's in left field. And a pitch on the way, and that's hit into shallow center field. That's still meant. Mango. And he puts that one away as Royce Lewis flies out. His day probably over. Two for three today. Tanner Murray is the third baseman. He takes over for me. Ronald Simon is the second baseman. As Nick Meyer had already entered the game first. So we've got still Mangum in center, Palacios in right, Sabe at short, and Jackson Ketchy. Those are the holdovers. There's Kepler to bat. 0 for 2 today. Strike out a Fly out takes it in there for a strike. Well, Armstrong so far. Spring training. He's logged four innings, allowed just two runs on three hits, no walks. And that one late strike call. Yeah, Danny, he knows what's going on. His first big league season was way back in 2015 with Cleveland. He pitched from Seattle, Baltimore. The Rays went to Miami, came back to the Rays, and had a really good year last year. 39 out into 138 ERA. Travel veteran like that, guys in the bullpen like that. And there's strike three, boy. Said hello, good afternoon, and good night. There's Kepler. Strikes out, two down. And here is Carlos Santana to bat. Hey, in the Fort Myers area, there are vibrant islands, neighborhoods, tons of outdoor activities, and delicious food and craft beer scenes. Start creating your own memories at visit fortmyers.com. Who had a swing to miss off speed? Santana fooled there. And jumping first pitch. Walked, had a good at bat, single RBI in that three run first inning. Storyline is the Tampa Bay Rays have hit four home runs, all solo shots. That's hit high in the air, right center field. Traveling in the ballpark. And that is going to be caught in a three up, three down inning for Sean Armstrong. Twins go quietly here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Rays four, Twins three. We'll be back on your home for Twins Baseball. Hey, today's Twin Spring training game brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Take you the rest of the way. 4-3 Tampa. Here's Chris. Thank you, sir. It's Richie Palacios, who was down to the count 0-2 to the righty Jackson. When Diaz was picked off to the Indian at first, he's down in the count 0-1 to the lefty Stephen Okert. And Okert flips in a breaking ball strike, a slider at 80. And Palacios gets right back to an 0-2 count. Solo homer, he's flied out to right field. Six-game Grapefruit League hitting streak. A swinging miss, he's down on strikes. He chased a slider off the plate. Oakridge first punch out. Alex Jackson will bat. A host of new defenders for the Twins. Marnick still in left field. Houghton in center. And it's now Mycel Urbina in right field. The new third baseman is Rubel Cespedes. The new first baseman, Kiani Cavaco. And the new catcher is Brian O'Keefe. Jackson awaits, lays the bat on his shoulder, and the first pitch taken for a strike by the right-hander. Okert's sixth outing of the spring. Left-hander acquired from Miami. Sets at the belt and delivers, and a little number foul near Mejia in the on-deck circle. It's 0-2. Pablo Lopez started five innings, five hits, four of them solo home runs. We call that a bly level. 
as Bert would say, Nick, solo home runs never beat you. 0 2 pitch in the air to left field. Larnick has been busy into the gap he goes, and Trevor makes the catch for out number two. So first Jackson and now Okert facing the minimum so far in relief of Pablo Lopez. Four runs on six hits, including those four solo homers, two for Randy Rosarena. A three run first for the Twins. That's all they've had. Three runs on four hits. As Oker delivers to Mejia, switch hitter, and he's batting right handed here. And he takes ball one. A beautiful Saturday here in Fort Myers. Glad to have you with us at the Lee Health Sports Complex. We are well past the halfway point of spring training. We have a nice little note in our game notes every day and it tells me that there's just 12 days until opening day in Kansas City. Oker delivers a big swing and miss at a fastball at 92. It's one and one. So Pablo Lopez will start that one. As he did a year ago, it was a 4 0 shutout on opening day last year. Here's the 2 1. That's wide for a ball. Actually, I think that makes it 2 1. I think it was 1 1 already. They hadn't wiped the scoreboard. Oker reminds me a little bit of Burley in that. This way he wears his uniform and just nonchalant out there and get the day's work in. Yeah, very businesslike as he gets the outside corner for strike two in the count square. Didn't waste a lot of time. No. There's number 16, former Frank Viola number. Another lefty. Doesn't quite have the curls of Frankie V. The 2-2 in the air, again left field, but it's not going to reach Larnick. This will be the shortstop, Will Holland. And the former Auburn Tiger grabs it out of the sky. And that is a 1-2-3 blink in the midst of inning from Stephen Oker. Time to stretch in Fort Myers. Twins trail 4-3. Let's see if they can change that next on the home for Twins baseball. Chris Atterbury, Danny Gladden, welcoming you back to the Lee Hell Sports Complex as Sean Armstrong faces Twins catcher Brian O'Keefe. He misses wide with a breaking ball, one ball, no strikes. Twins trailing four to three, three runs in the first, nothing since. New battery made for Armstrong is veteran catcher Rob Brantley. There's a pitch high and the count is 2-0. and oh. Also a new right fielder, that's Nick Schnell, playing in right field for the Rays. Armstrong and Brantley, that's a 70 years old worth of battery there. It's a swing and miss two and one. Brantley broke in way back in 2010. At that point in time, he was a member of the Tigers organization playing in West Michigan. Spent last year in AAA Buffalo in the Blue Jays organization. So the two one has fouled straight back. And Danny, go through the list. He was with Detroit, Miami. He was with the White Sox, Seattle, Cincinnati, White Sox again, Atlanta, Cleveland, Philly, the Giants, the Yankees. Some winter ball mixed in, and then Toronto last year at AAA. And he takes called strike three, and Brian O'Keefe, his fellow backstop, is out number one, out on strikes. Not often you see this level of experience this late in a spring training game, Armstrong and Brantley, and that's going to be all from Armstrong. As Kevin Cash will come out and take the baseball from his veteran. He was good. Four up, four down. We've got a pitching change in Fort Myers. It's the Twins trailing 4-3. We'll see if they can do something about that against the Rays bullpen when we return on the home for Twins baseball. Left-hander Garrett Clevenger will pitch here in the seventh for Tampa Bay, taking over for Sean Armstrong, who retired all four men he faced. With one out, it's the right-handed batting D.H. Manny Margot, and then the left-handed batting left fielder Trevor Larnick against Clevenger. Clevenger appeared in only 15 games last year, and he suffered a torn ACL early in the season. It was a 10th inning rundown, and he smashed into Aaron Hicks, then with the Yankees. It was back on May the 7th, so just getting the season underway, he tore his ACL. But he's back here in spring training. He's made three appearances, given up a run on two hits. Trying to work his way back into that Rays bullpen this season. 
Manny Margot, the former Rays, 0 for 2 today. Empty bases behind Clevenger. Cockeyed stands atop the mound and delivers. And the pitch is down low and squirts away towards the backstop. No balls in to strike. Pepio started. He gave up three runs on three hits and a walk. Recorded two outs in the first inning. They lifted him for Kevin Kelly. Came in and got the final out. as a pitch up and away one and one. Then Pepio came back and he was a different guy. One, two, three, second, a one-out double, but nothing more in the third. Worked around a leadoff walk in the fourth. He ended up throwing 73 pitches overall. Now it's Clevenger, bends his knees, and delivers 2-0. A little number back to the mound. Clevenger picks it up in his glove, throws sidearm to first. And he gets Manny Margo. Here's Trevor Lund. Danny, he's had a solid spring. He's hit the ball well. He's hit the ball for power. He's hit the ball well against lefties. Now, Walner appears to be the choice in left field for the Twins, and Larnick may end up getting squeezed back to St. Paul to start the year, but he hasn't let it affect the way he's performed. No, he hasn't. I think he's got a good head on his shoulders. He understands making a lot of the road trips. Ball one to Larnick. It's one ball, no strikes. Larnick, you talked about his choice of lumber this year. He said he changed his back just a little bit. Went out of Texas and worked out. Just a little bit. I think that, you know he might change it on the outs, not the style or anything like that. Just the weight of the bat occasionally. And he looks lean, he looks fast, and he rolls this ball to the right side, and it's picked up there by Ronnie Simon. It goes out Trevor Larnick in the end of his time. One, two, and three go the Twins back for the eighth in a moment. It's the top of the eighth inning, and the Twins dip back into the bullpen for Josh Stormont. So Stormont will pitch for Minnesota, acquired in the offseason, signed away after spending the entirety of his career with Kansas City. And Stormont will face C.J. Hinojosa, who will bat in lieu of Oslovis Basabe. So he, C.J. Hinojosa will lead things off here in the top of the eighth inning. The Twins trailing 4-3. to three. Stormont, fourth pitcher of the day, Lopez, Jackson, Okert, and now Stormont. Josh Jetson fires, and the first pitch is a breaking ball. It's outside for a ball, one ball, no strikes. Coming back off thoracic outlet syndrome, curtailed his time with the Royals and probably affected how effective he was able to be as he zips a fastball in at 95 for a strike, one and one. Now, when he first came up and exploded on the scene with Kansas City, he was throwing upper 90s, just easy chance. The 1-1 one -one swung on and fouled away. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification on your home for Twins baseball. Stomon has a new baseball, climbs up atop the hill. Josh really embedded himself in the Kansas City community, made his full-time home there. He and his wife, Angelina, who was one of the stars of the Twins' wives' softball win this year over the Rays' wives earlier this year, pitching side two and two. His wife was a two-sports star in college, played basketball, ran track. The MVP was Jessica Garcia, Trevor Larnick's fiance. Clobbered three home runs. 2-2 Two -two on the ground towards third base, but foul. Cespedes watches it roll into the corner. I wonder if there's any trash talking between the wives going on, and you know, and we're better than you, and three home runs. There must have been a home well, she, run trot, she right? She could talk all she wanted. Yeah, I think, I think she could talk all she wanted. Mm -hmm. $10,000 was raised in that game. Did you say one of our coaches was pitching it? It was Rudy Hernandez who was pitching it. Giving it up to our girl, gals, right? Bert, Bert was unavailable. Two balls and two strikes. This one fouled right back towards us. It's going to drop down below 
and pulling itself in the seats. Still two and two. As Stalman, a big part of a, a, a dog-related charity there in Kansas City, rescuing and supporting pit bulls who'd been abandoned. A lot of great work in that community. Breaking ball fouled straight back. And the count stays two and two. So throwing a lot of pitches here to the lead man, C.J. Hinojosa. Mangum is in the on-deck circle. He's gone the distance in center field. He's one for two. He also got picked off earlier today. Two different rays have been picked off in the game. One by Lopez, one by Jackson. And this ball hit high in the air, foul down the third baseline over towards T.K. Field. Won't quite make it, ends up in the bullpen. Now, lovely Saturday here in Fort Myers. Tomorrow, of course, St. Patrick's Day. And the Twins will spend it in Dunedin, unless you're like Chris Paddock, and you can spend it on the backfields here in Fort Myers. We will not broadcast that one in Dunedin. 2-2, Two -two foul back again. They're just wearing out Storm on here as Hinojosa staying alive by the skin of his teeth. The pitch. Let's take it high in the count now full at three and two. We'll be back on the air on Monday. Another simulcast. So we'll welcome in the moving pictures with our friends at Valley Sports North. That's going to be the Red Sox in town. And that'll be a noon start. Yeah, there was saw Stalmont walking around earlier. A couple of pitches. He took his time, walked off the mound, walked all the way around behind the mound before the ball was thrown out to him. And he just kind of shook his arm out a couple of times. Just very late in getting back on the mound. It's almost like he's pointing to his landing spot or something. Now you bring the trainer, might have, huh? They're not going to take any chances, obviously, with Josh. Well, as they chat on the mound, you look at that nice uniform Josh is wearing. You can suit up for the new season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of official jerseys, caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Minnesota Twins at MLBShop.com. Let's go, CJ. He's at 42 pitches. I got some new gear today, thanks to Frankie down in the clubhouse. Big Frank. Is this ball lined? Foul again down the third base line after Rocco. To turn to the Let's go, CJ. Let's go, CJ. This is a long at bat. This will be the 12th pitch of the at-bat to C.J. Hinojosa. Long set. And the pitch fouled away again. We'll get to a Baker's dozen as that one's going to be a souvenir. Nice catch made. Bare-handed catch. How about that? Let's go, C.J. Beer in the left hand. Baseball in the right hand. Trademark. Here it comes. And it's low ball four. Stomon just kind of stomping off the mound, frustrated. A 13 pitch walk, and here's Jake Mangum. I mentioned a dozen days till the Twins are in Kansas City. We'll open in Kansas City, go to Milwaukee, then come back home and open up Target Field with the Cleveland Guardians. Yeah, they're trying to hurry up and amp somebody up in that bullpen out there. They're still concerned. A little dribbler foul up the first baseline. So, you know, I haven't seen enough of Stomach to know if that's his routine in between pitches is to take his time and, you know, walk around, get the ball, rub it up a little bit. But the last couple of pitches, he's got that clock down to it like, two seconds and he's kind of rushing his pitch coming off the injury obviously they're not going to take any chances and that breaking ball didn't look right either when he's right that is a, a yellow hammer and that slipped and was high and a little sticky Cole Sands is up and throwing in the bullpen for the Twins when the clock goes off run when the clock goes off Snap throw over to first. That one gets away from the first baseman, Keani Cavaco. Rolls all the way up against the wall, and that will advance C.J. Hinojosa to second base. 
That's going to be a throwing error on Stallman. And he's over to back up the bag at third, and he's slowly making his way back up onto the mound. Cavaco playing at first base. Rubel Cespit is playing in the opposite corner at third base. Holland Rucker up the middle. O'Keefe is catching. And a weary Josh Stallman is. Mangum away to 1 1 pitch. Pitch low, and the count is 2 and 1. Top of the eighth inning. The Twins trail this game 4 to 3. Four solo home runs for the Rays. This game is slow to a sloth like crawl here in the top of the eighth inning. Runner at second, nobody out. Stamon delivers, and a swing and miss. As Mangum Jenya flicks down to a knee. He is the Mississippi State all time hits leader, Jake Mangum. More than Will Clark, more than Rafi Palmero, more than our buddy Brett Rooker. Played a Triple A with Miami last year. He was the player to be named later in the Vidal Bruhan trade. But we heard about Bruhan for years. This <laughs> hot young thing coming up. And they swapped him over to Miami. A look back at Hinojosa and the pitch, and he got away with another one. That was there, mailed up and away, and a good job by O'Keefe to keep it off the backstop. And Josh Doma, not comfortable, just does not look right here today. Sands continuing to warm. Your Sands, Doma, Alcala, the guys eyeballing that last spot, potentially in the Twins' bullpen on opening day. So pitch down, and then he walked another. And keep an eye on Rocco, Pete Mackey, and here comes Pete Mackey. Now, the first visit was a health visit, so he doesn't have to come out of the game. But Pete Mackey, and for those joining us in our simulcast on television, you see the big brace on his left elbow. Pete had his bicep tendon go doing a, a pull-up, working out early in camp. So he has been working very much with just the right arm. He didn't realize he even had a bicep tendon, let alone trying to do a pull-up. He said he was just reaching up to stretch and it popped and rolled yeah. up in him. Yeah, very painful. And he's a guy who, on the road to kind of wind down and, and get away from the fine work he does, dig into the pitch, he'll play his guitar in his hotel room. He also an incredibly gifted piano player. And so part of that with the brace on the left arm is that two of his favorite things, you know, the guitar and the piano, off, off limits for a little while. That'd be good therapy. No, maybe it is. Right? It's his bicep. Well, I mean, if you're, so his you're, fingers. you're fretting with the left hand, so you're, and you got a lot of tendons getting tugged on up there. It's the batter is top of the order, Nick Meyer. Tore one. Huh. No balls in a strike. Double steal! The one person who has not been subbed out is that guy. Swing and miss, it's over two. That guy's in it for the full nine. He's a coach. He, he's got a Tampa <laughs> Bay hat on. Is he's that the guy in the front row who's yelling with yeah. the rubber chicken? I don't know a rubber chicken. Maybe. Yeah, oh yeah, he had the he was brandishing a rubber chicken earlier in the game. Hmm. Yeah. Who? I mean, who among us has brandished a rubber chicken at a sporting event? Stalmont pumps the front leg, still looking for his first out. Twins play for two. And a pitch just off the outside corner. O'Keefe wanted that. It's one ball, two strikes. Velo's still good. 96 miles an hour there for Stalmont. Who has walked the first two he's faced, also throwing a ball away at first. Twins trail by a run, trying to keep it that way. Here's the pitch. And that's low and outside. Again, that's a slider. He just does not have a feel for that pitch today. Well, when Stomach came up, Danny, it was high velocity carry fastball, and then he'd snap that big hook at you. And it was a devastating late game combination. Pitch to the Zuza Pacific. Breaking ball swung on and missed, and there's out number one. Finally got away one. Ronnie Simon's going to be the batter. He's now playing second base. You know, we talked about that home opener with Cleveland. 
And the Twins have a, a new spot you can watch the game from at Target Field. They call it the dock. It's the overlooking right field. It's an exclusive seating area, and it is cool looking. It's presented by Winnebago Industries. Uh, up to 12 people can fit in there, six captain's chairs, and as we've talked about, it is in perfect home run territory out there in right field. First pitch ball one here to Simon. One ball, no strikes. Go, 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 go. Life jackets not required, but recommend. Time called. Maybe we could do a broadcast from out there. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Let's go, Simon. Let's go. Out there before by the foul pole and third base line. Stalma delivers and the pitch fouled away. One ball and one strike. Double play ends this laborious eighth inning. Go, Mangum! Ronnie Simon bats left-handed. And he watches wide for a ball. Two balls and a strike now to Ronnie Simon. This thing was buzzing along. Stalmont, though, has had his difficulties here this evening, this afternoon. It's not going to come as a surprise as a breaking ball looked at. Snapped there down to second by O'Keefe. Oh, he hit the runner right where he didn't want to be hit. And the base runner at second, Hinojosa, was headlong into the bag at second. His legs were spread apart, and that ball landed in the one spot he did not want that Ronnie. ball to land. That did not look fun. Simon Delicioso. The pitch was a strike. Two and one. Three and one. Coaches were running out there and he's smiling and he was pointing to this equipment that he had. He goes, hey, I'm okay. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that didn't look good. Batter's on at first and second. The batter is still Simon. I, what I was going to say is not a surprise. Rubber chicken guy. And, and Danny, this is not a shot. He's sitting alone. He is not sitting with friends. There were people sitting closer. They've moved away. Do it. The three one. And it's taken for a strike. Three and two. What's the chicken represent? I have no idea what the, the rubber chicken represents. This is the voice you've been hearing. Three balls, two strikes. Here it comes. Swung on a miss. He struck him out. Simon with a mighty cut. So two walks followed by two strikeouts. And here comes Rocco Baldelli. And there goes Josh Stalmont. We'll take a break. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Two on, two out for the Rays. They lead 4-3. And this is your home for Twins Baseball. Cole Sands atop the mound. And Cole Sands on with two out and two on here in the eighth inning. He'll face John Diaz to try to get out of this inning. First time that Cole has pitched at home here in the Grapefruit League. He pitched at Baltimore, at Pittsburgh, and at Detroit. So he is picking up some road miles. And the last time out, two scoreless innings with a couple of strikeouts in Lakeland. And, Danny, that's a role that Cole Sands is going to be asked to fill this uh, year, no, multiple inning guy. Yeah, no question about it. I think that, you know, he's got a big, big role on this club. And hard throwing right-hander, got a great slider. Went to Florida State. He is a Floridian, so right at home here in this lovely Florida spring weather. He's going to face on, Diaz. Hinojosa is the runner at second base. Mangum is the runner at first base. And if there's any concern coming out of this ball game, I think Josh Stalmont's a guy that the Twins are going to want to check on as he just did not look right. Did come back, get a couple of strikeouts. Velo didn't dip. That's a good sign. Long afternoon for Josh. Sands, the big right-hander, sets and fires. And the pitch is upstairs for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. Well, cutter from Cole Sands to start things off to the left-handed batting Diaz. He singled and was picked off in the sixth. And this one moves his feet. That was a cutter that cut right back at his back foot. And he moved that bright yellow, canary yellow spike out of the way. 
Twins this year won't go to the drop until late. I think that's a September trip. Let's go. Catchers catch. Chickens cut. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Sands delivers. And he misses down and in 3-0. and Cole Sands made his big league debut, as I recall, at Tropicana Field. Swing away, Diaz. Swing away. You got to go ahead. Green light. In the on-deck circle is Tanner Murray, who came on to play third base. As a 3-0 in for a strike. Taking all the way. Three balls and a strike. Four solo home runs for the Rays. A 3-1 first for the Twins. That's all our scoring. The pitch swung on and hit in the air to center field for Maddox Houghton. Houghton drifting back on it. Son glinting off his glasses. Reaches up and makes the catch. Cradling the final out of the inning. The eighth is finally over as the Rays strand a pair. It's the Twins trailing 4-3. In the batter's box next in your home for Twins baseball. Your local Toyota dealers bringing you today's twin spring training game. Toyota, let's go places. Jake Rucker into the batter's box. First plate appearance for Rucker, and he takes a ball from lefty Garrett Clevenger. One ball and no strikes. Long into the dugout for Clevenger, who came on to get the last two outs in the seventh. South Paul delivers low, and it's two balls, no strikes. Twins have not had a base runner since a leadoff walk to Eddie Julian in the fifth. Rucker then ran for him at first. He was doubled up, and it's been seven in a row since then. So the Rays' bullpen has faced the minimum since Pepio left. There's a ball in. It's 3-0. and Even Pepio had a little hiccup in the first. He re-entered after allowing Kevin Kelly to get the last out of a three-run first inning for Minnesota. See if Rucker turns it loose, 3-0. Former Tennessee volunteer. Watches a strike called, and the count is three and one. Will Holland will follow, and then I believe Maddox Houghton would be the next man to bat. This is the first of a double header here at the Lee Hill Sports Complex today. The spring breakout game between the Twins prospects, the Ways prospects, will follow this one. As ball four delivered. And Rucker to tie and run aboard. David Fest is going to start that one. You can see it right here at Valley Sports North. No radio for that one. And they're going to have the automatic ball system in that game, Danny, where you can challenge the balls and strikes. I'm kind of curious to watch how it plays out. Yeah, the manager can't challenge it. It's either the pitcher, catcher, or the, even the batter. Yep, you can say that wasn't a called strike three, and they tap your head, and then they look at it. As Holland takes a strike 0-1. I believe the umpire still raises the right hand out. I think it's a buzzard, or they put it up on the scoreboard. Put up right on the away. scoreboard, yeah. And, then and he'll, he'll just look at the scoreboard and they'll make the determination. Yep, you're still out, or no, you're still in there. There's a pitch wide. It's one and one. So it'll be fun to watch that go on. We expect to see David Festa, Charlie Soto. He's going to pitch in that ball game. So give them the Walker here. Jenkins the won't play, here. but boy, there's going to be a ton of talent on display. A 1-1 runner going, pitch hit in the air to center field. Mangum, who's gone the distance, drifting back, looking for the wall, finds it, and makes the catch a couple of feet in front of the wall in right center field. A long fly ball out for Will Holland. And Maddox Houghton will be the batter. Houghton on for Buxton, great day for Byron. A single and a run in the first, scored from first on a double. He then doubled and narrowly missed a home run to left off the top of the fence in the third. He made a beautiful diving catch in center field. Out and bats right-handed. Tight stance, back of the box. Clevenger misses up top. It's one ball, no strikes. Ruble Cespedes is in the on-deck circle. Playing third base in lieu of Royce Lewis. The pitch from Clevenger. That's down and in. Two balls, no strikes. Now, Garrett Clevenger, no relation to Mike Clevenger, and they spell the name differently. Garrett has an A in there. Baseball ready, baseball ready. 
He's still out there, I think. I, yeah, I was going to ask if he found a job yet. There goes the runner. And the 2-0 is wide. No throw from the catcher, Brantley, the veteran. It's a stolen base for Jake Rucker. That's certainly part of his toolbox. And, Danny, it's not just stealing him for numbers. He puts the tying run now in scoring mm -hmm. position here in the eighth inning. Yeah, that pitch was a good pitch for the catcher to be able to come up and throw. He just double dribbled with it. Three balls and no strikes to Maddox Houghton. And it's wide, and that should be ball four it is. So Clevenger, after that long wait, he, he was in the dugout a long time after getting two quick outs. And he's been a little off his game here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So two on now for Cespedes. That does bring the double play back into effect. And we're going to have ourselves a visit on the mound. Good chance for us to tell you that this copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins. That may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Another lovely Saturday here in Fort Myers. Again, the team's in Dunedin tomorrow. No broadcast. But we will be back on the air. With the Red Sox coming to town on Monday. Another simulcast. And we look forward to seeing the Twins and the Red Sox. We're over at JetBlue last night. What a great atmosphere that was. And should be a good Monday matinee. Two runners on for Cespedes. He bats from the left side. He swings right through the first pitch, and the count is 0-1. Second time we've seen Rubel Cespedes this spring. Mixing and matching. He was walking over from the minor league side, had all his gear and was waiting just right through a bunch of fans, had no idea he was coming into play prior to this one. The 0 1 bank towards third base. Pick up, step on the bag for one, throw over to first base, gets away from the first baseman. So no double play. Houghton will scurry on down to third, and Cespedes ends up at second base. So Tanner Murray forces Jake Rucker at third with the inning second out, tried to end the inning on a double play, but a wild throw instead. Puts runners on at second and third for two outs for Micellar Bina. I'd like to see the young kids come up late in the ballgame and be able to make that kind of play. And even at the first base side, you'd like to see him be able to come up and help him out on the other side and pick that ball out of the dirt. Yeah, that's Nick Meyer, the catcher slash first baseman. Second and third now, and we'll see if Urbina can do some damage as a pitch down and in, one ball, no strikes. That's the other thing, you know, a young kid like Urbina comes in. But you've got a chance now to win a ball game here on the big field. Runners on at second and third. Twins down 4 3. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Looking for a little two out rally. The 1 0 pitch, and that's wide. Two balls and no strikes. And Seth, is that Seth Gray? Nope, at first base today. Now Keanu Cavaco has moved into the on-deck circle. Two-zero pitch. Inside ball three. Boy, a different guy, isn't it? Clevenger this half inning versus last. Sure, where it went on him, but falling behind a lot of these hitters and really not commanding the fastball nor the breaking ball. Yeah, the long half inning while Stalmont was struggling. Lost his mojo a little bit. Howden's the tie and run at third. Cespedes go ahead and run at second. 3 0s a strike right on the nose. And here's the big pitch. Twins have not scored since Santana's RBI single in the first scored Royce Lewis. Infield back, outfield straight away. Pitch and dub towards third base. Might die in the grass. Picked up by Clevenger. No throw. We got a tie ball game. An infield single for Isel Urbina. Will bring home the Twins' fourth run. Houghton scores easily. Cespedes down to third. And we've got a 4 4 deadlock with two outs here in the eighth and a chance for Keanu Cavaco to be the hero. And Clevenger made a good pitch and sawed him off and just went spinning. Up the third base line and died in the infield grass. Clevenger wise not to attempt to throw. So they're on the corners for Keani Cavaco. Former number one pick for the Twins. 
No home plate umpire steps out. Was that a pitch clock violation on the pitcher? Yeah, yeah. ball one. It's ball one. Sometimes when the pitchers made a fielding play like that, they'll give them a little more leeway, but not the case. So it's 1-0. Oh, Tobacco lines a base hit to left field. Come on down, Rubel Cespedes. You're the go-ahead run. It's 5-4 Minnesota. Keone Cavaco jumps on the first pitch and lashes it to left, and the Twins lead it by the score of 5-4. to four. Two walks, two base hits, an error. It all adds up to the Twins taking a 5-4 lead, and here's O'Keefe. Well, you're out there for a long time. Your defense, you wanted to make a play behind you. They had an opportunity and come up with it. O'Keefe cracks the first pitch foul on the right field line, 0-1. No balls and a strike to the catcher, Brian O'Keefe. Manny Margot's in the on-deck circle. He's dh today. He'd like a fourth plate appearance. 0-1 pitch. Swung on and shot towards right field, and that's passed to Diving Myron into right field for a base hit. Urbino around from second. He will score. It's 6-4 twins on an opposite field RBI single for Brian O'Keefe. Cavaco ends up at third, and the Twins have their largest lead of the game. Here comes Kevin Cash. There goes Garrett Clevenger. It's the bottom of the eighth inning. The Twins have a 6-4 to four lead. We'll take a timeout on your home for Twins baseball. Santa Barbara was drafted by your Minnesota Twins in 2019 he played at Fort Myers and then a little bit at Cedar Rapids so record who did not play in the lost season of 2020 ended up in the Astros organization now finds his way to Tampa Bay he's out of UC Santa Barbara late pick 28 round pick 6'3 235 pounds and Joe record is on the pitch here in the eighth inning He's going to face Manny Margot, so Margot does get that extra plate appearance, and Trevor Larnick, I think, hoping for a second at bat as well. Record last year at Triple-A Sugarland had 11 saves in the Houston minor league system. He's given up one unearned run across three innings this spring. Consecutive RBI hits in the inning for Urbina, Cavaco, and O'Keefe. Manny Margot is 0 for 3. His first pitch, now back to record. He tumbles, spins, rolls, flips it to first base, and the inning is over. Well, he was in to put out the fire, and he did a little stop, drop, and roll to get the out on one pitch over at first base. The Twins play 3 in the 8th. They lead it by the score of 6 to 4. Cole Sands going to try to finish this thing off. He tosses a 93-mile-an-hour sinker at Tanner Murray, and Murray takes it for a strike, 0-1 here in the top of the ninth inning. Sands fires Platewood, foul ball straight back quickly, 0-2. Cole Sands now the pitcher of record in this one. Twins pick up three runs in the bottom of the eighth inning off of Clevenger, and they now lead the ball game 6-4. Sands offers, and this one hit back up the middle, and that one is going to be in the center field for about an 18-hop base hit. So we're not done yet. Seventh hit of the day for the Rays, and now Nick Schnell will be the batter. Rob Brantley, the veteran, moves into the on-deck circle. Danny, I think that there is a spot for Cole Sands, certainly an important role. He'll be on that carousel back and forth between St. Paul and Mini or in uh, Target Field, I should say. And first pitch foul ball strike going one. It's a tough deal because you never really get into a rhythm. But I thought Cole last year learned a lot going through that process that should help him this season. Yeah, no question. I think that you know he's got a, still a lot of 
a lot of upside. And don't forget, during the course of the season, guys like this are going to be needed in the big club. No question about that. A big swinging miss in the town is 0 2. The Twins will have some depth at AAA, not only in their starters, but in the bullpen. And what that allows them is when the Twins dip down and bring a guy up, Danny, by and large, those are guys who have been in the big leagues before. Swinging miss, and down he goes. Schnell is on the highway back to the dugout. And those are guys that have been in the big leagues before, so there's no big wow yep. factor uh, in, in the nerves that you got to worry about. That's a nice running fastball up and away right there. That Kid Chase, good pitch. I, I think Cole looks like he's put some work in on his body. He looks a little leaner, a little stronger, and the ball's moving for Cole Sims here in the Grapefruit League. He faces the veteran Brantley, left-handed hitter. First pitch is whacked near his own dugout, 0-1. It's a little cutter. He running in on him a little bit. Yeah, he's a big in. kid. He's got he's got good size on the mound. I always talk about mound presence. You get in the batter's box, you're looking at a big kid out there. It comes right after you. Here's the 0-1. And it's high. Now, when you see Sands off the field, usually you see Hedrick and you see Winder, who has been hurt. And they're all big, broad-shouldered guys, and then they look like the, you know, a center and two guards for a football team. One ball, one strike. Brantley at the plate. Double play ends the game. Instead, it's a line drive to right field. Urbina going back on it, looking up, plays it off the wall. Murray rounds second and gets to third. It's a stand-up double for Brantley, and the tying runs are now in scoring position with one out here in the ninth inning. So a veteran Brantley rips a double off the wall in right. Couple of hits here in the ninth inning, and the Rays won't go quietly. And the batter is going to be Carlos Colmenares. So Colmenares batting for Mejia. Quick chat on the mound. I got to think we're getting close to those four mound visits today. How yeah, about the Tampa Bay Rays and? You see a lot of the guys come off the bench here, these young players, high numbers. It's an organization here that's always ranked really high in their minor league system. And a lot of it has to do with them drafting right. They have great instructors. They draft a lot of athletic players. And then also, when they make that trade, they usually get the three to four players back in a trade for one. And a lot of those guys, you read about them, and now all of a sudden they become one of their top prospects in their organization. Yeah, and credit to them, right, development-wise. And that's what every team is striving for is, can I take a guy and make him better? And I think the Rays have set a standard in that. And I think you're starting to see other teams, the Orioles, for one, reaping the benefits of great development. And the Twins are, are right there as well. And you look at some of the guys we're going to see in this breakout game. You know, Chris, and you talk about a lot of the players, talented players that are filtered around the league. Also front office people from the Tampa Bay organization, they are filtered around with the other organizations. A 1-0 is high and they count 2-0. That has certainly been the case. Well, it seems like a lot of clubs will come to Tampa Bay and say, hey, can we talk to one of your assistants here and this guy there? And sure enough, next thing you know, they pop up, they're running another organization. Swinging miss by Colomonares, and it's 2-1. and one. And when you look at their system now and talking with some of the race folks today in player development, where they're a little light, where they've been so good in the past, is they don't have that line of frontline starting pitching coming through the ranks that they really have been very adept at identifying over the past decade. The breaking ball drops right in the hoop for a strike. It's 2-2. Two two. Runners on at second and third behind Cole Sands. Infield plays back. He'll give up a run with a two-run lead here. And he's going to break the ball down and out of the zone, and then he takes that one. Maybe he's not set up either for that high fastball to chase or another breaking ball down and around the, the bat an back ankle. Colomonares in left-handed. Pitch delivered. A little number back up the middle. A hard charge for Holland from short. Takes the out at first as a run scores. RBI ground out for Colomonares. Nice play by Will Holland. Murray scores, and it's a 6-5 Twins lead. The tie-in runs at third. And C.J. Hinojosa, he had the 13-pitch walk against Stamont in the eighth inning will face Cole Sands. Here's what's at stake. If Hinojosa knocks in a run, we're going to play the bottom of the ninth inning. If not, we're going to get the field ready for the breakout game. First pitch, off-speed strike, and a good one. It's 0-1. 
Again, David Fest is going to start that ball game for the Minnesota Twins. We hope to see Charlie Soto. And we saw a, probably a family member in a Charlie Soto Twins jersey down there. Ground ball towards third. Picked up by Cespedes. Throws to first, and the ball game is over. And we are spared the bottom of the ninth today at the Lee Health Sports Complex. Twins win 6 5. Back to talk about it again next on the home for Cooper's